Hello everyone, Ron here from LTL Tutoring Central. And today I'm talking about using the Common Lit site for reading, comprehension or understanding, and also for writing, something a lot of people don't think about. Now I know I've made a couple of live streams and talked about Common Lit and showed you how to use Common Lit. But if you haven't caught those, I wanted to make a separate video just about using Common Lit both without registering at all or as a student, because I do use Commonlet for uh, writing courses for my students. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Also, it's relevant for a couple of my Udemy courses, including study skills and strategies, become an A plus student, and improving your reading speed and comprehension. I'm going to Put some coupons below for you and those are asynchronous courses you do them on your own you can do them wherever or whenever you want as long as you're online and uh, they can really help you in your uh, studying and also in your reading ability and your ability to retain information so those uh, can be really helpful check them out but i also use these texts and these stories for uh, writing programs, uh, literature writing programs for my students. If you wanted to get into that, you would just send me an email and I would send you further information about those programs that are a little more involved. But for most of this video, I want to show you how you can use Commonlet for yourself, uh, even if you don't uh, register, even if you don't sign in. So let's have a look first at not even signing in. So you type in commonlit.org and you should see a screen similar to this. And if you do have an account, of course, you go to the top right here where you see login and you can just log into your account with your password, etc. And if not, you could sign up here or you could go here and say create free account. If you do the create free account, it will uh, give you some questions. I am an educator, I am a parent or guardian, I am a student, if you're a student, you must sign up as a student. If you're a parent or an educator, you do have to jump through a few little hoops to prove that you're of a certain age, etc., cetera, uh, because they are trying to keep students out of the teacher's accounts and the parents' accounts so they don't have access to the answers and other resources that are not really intended for the student. Uh, so if you do it uh, yourself as a parent for your child, <clears throat> A lot of people are teaching their children at home right now. Uh, you know, have another account set up once you're in as a parent or as a teacher, of course, you set up an account for your child or for your student, and they would have a different sign in so that they don't have access to the answers and reports from that point of view. They get their own reports, which we'll look at in a little while when we look at the student version. So but you don't even have to sign into anything if you don't want to, to use some of the basic tools here. Go to the library at the left, click on here. You can do a, ser a search in many different ways. There's featured content, view all text, units. Uh, the units, if you click on the units, it will show you uh, nothing here because you need to be registered for that. Sorry, that part doesn't work. Uh, go back to the library, <laughs> search the library. You can type in to the library and you can type in uh, any topic that you want. So I, I could just type in sports, for example, and it will come up with some text and stories based on sports. I can also go to the library and look at books. So there's certain books in here, uh, Beloved, Beowulf, The Joy Luck Club, you might've heard of that, Lord of the Flies. So you can look at uh, texts or stories based on those books, the genre, uh, fable, quotation, psychology, etc. Grade level, this is very good if you're uh, doing it for your child or for a student. It's from third to twelfth grade, but don't let the grades worry you too much because these texts, especially the upper level texts, are very interesting. To be honest, I've even enjoyed the third and fourth grade texts <laughs> for myself. And uh, so any adult can also gain a lot from reading these stories and texts. It isn't just for school grade children. The idea of the grades is to help parents or educators uh, gauge which texts might be written at a level that they're able to read. However, your child may be in seventh grade and reading at a grade three level. So you may need to go back and, and pick up 
a lower grade level, or maybe a, a grade three level is reading at an advanced level. So the grade level is not as important as, uh, as the reading the text themselves. And again, I can have, I can myself, or I can have an older student, even an adult student, read a fifth grade text, but then we can discuss and we can do writing uh, for a much, uh, a much more elevated uh, level. So you don't have to be stuck on the grades. I took a children's literature court, uh, course in a university and was reading really basic books like Peter Rabbit and having to write essays on them. So uh, you can use any text for learning. Literary device, uh, irony, suspense, uh, consonants, diction. So that can be helpful. Uh, text sets. So they have Russian literature, American romanticism, ancient Rome, etc. And uh, themes, uh, uh, morality, community, uh, growing up. So, so there's lots of different ways of searching to find the kind of text that you, that you want. Uh, I often use the grade level or just, uh, or the featured content. So we can go to featured content and see what's coming up right now. We have self-care, um, what is a vaccine, very interesting right now. Uh, so let's just look at self-care for a moment. So you click on the text you want or the story you want, and it comes up here. You have the option of downloading it as a PDF. You can download it to your computer so that you have access to it offline. So if you want to do it later and you just want to do it offline, that, that's a great choice. You can also print it from there. When I'm teaching students at the big table behind me <laughs> in person, I often print off the lessons and we use paper uh, and you can print off the questions as well. So that's an option uh, for most of them. Some of them don't have the uh, PDF available. Uh, you can change the font size here to uh, make it larger or smaller. I've never used it. I just use the one that's here. It tells you uh, if you haven't chosen a grade, I just went into the featured text. This tells me that it's the ninth grade text. Uh, sometimes it gives a Lexile uh, rating as well. I don't see one here. Uh, some people use that, but this says ninth grade. I've used this text. It could be used for ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, and adults, because it's all about taking care of yourself. And some of the tips in here are really useful and are in fact uh, correlated to some of the tips that I give in my videos and even in my courses that uh, I will remind you about a little bit later. So you read through the text or you have your child read through. There is sometimes some help with vocabulary, uh, number four, number five, and then you can click on those uh, or down here it tells you number five is deficit. It gives you the meaning. So that helps you with the word or you can click on five here with deficit and it gives you the definition here. So that's very helpful. Uh, there is a read aloud version. We'll look at that. You have to be registered. You have to be signed in for that. And uh, there's also annotation and highlighting, but again, you need to be signed in. So there are a few things you can't do with just coming in without registering or signing in, but you still get the basic tests. You still get all of the questions. There are guiding questions. They work a little bit differently here, but the guiding question helps to walk you through the text. So you read a smaller amount, click on the question. If you were doing it as a student, you would have to actually, it would, it would blank out the rest of the text. Uh, here you could choose to click on it. It asks you a question to take care of ourselves, we must, and it gives you some choices. You choose an answer based on just the small amount you've read and it tells you whether you're correct or not, and then you move on. Of course, if, if you were incorrect, you could just keep clicking until you find the right answer. What's the point of that? Well, the point is to try to slow you down and help you focus on what you're reading. It's the comprehension piece. Reading itself, a lot of people can decode words and read. They can even read quickly, but it doesn't do you any good reading quickly or reading slowly if you didn't understand any of the material. So the the idea of the guiding questions to help you make sure you're focusing, not just reading the words, but actually focusing and understanding what you're saying. So those are good. Then there's the assessment questions. I'm just gonna move this. And it, here, here you would just answer them because you can't really click and send them in because we're not signed in. 
but you do get the questions and you do get the answer choices. You could write them down, or of course, if you've printed them on paper, you could circle them. And you go through each question, there's next down here, or you can click on the number up above and go to the next question, next and next. And when you reach the end of the questions here, you do nothing, there's nothing else you can do here, but it'll be different when we look at the student. If you're doing it with your child, of course, you'll need to check their uh, answers and see if you agree with them. And at the end, there's sometimes a, a writing um, question, a question that involves usually a relatively short written answer rather than multiple choice. So that's also very helpful to get a little bit of writing in. The other piece that I really like are the discussion questions. So there's usually only a couple. I think there's two on this one. Yes, there's two. And I use the discussion questions, yes, to discuss the story or the text because you can get more involved, more in depth into the material. But also I use them for longer writing assignments. So for my uh, literature writing program that uses Common Lit, if you take this uh, program with me, you would be writing longer articles for the discussion questions. That's the primary reason for using the text uh, for, the, for the writing program that I have. And why would we do that? Well, first of all, you have a jumping off point, the text. You will be using sentences and paragraphs for most of these. Most of these require longer answers. So we can cover sentence structure, paragraph structure, uh, grammar, punctuation. Of course, we can also look at logical development, uh, detail inclusion, all of these pieces that are very important for any academic writing because whatever you would be using, all of the skills you would be using here are basically the same skills you would be using for essay writing, speech writing, book reports. So it's a very useful, the discussion questions are very useful. And the discussion questions are not seen when the student is signed in. So as a parent or teacher, you can use those. Uh, I don't think that really matters because seeing the question, there are no answers provided even in the teacher account for the discussion questions. So you as a, as a teacher or as a parent have to be familiar with the text and, and use it as well. So those are some of the uh, things that you can do without even registering, without even sign, signing in. I think that's really great. Uh, it's totally free. It's free to sign in as well, remember. Uh, there are, there's the parent guide and teacher guide. I have not used these too much, but there's, uh, you know, ask your child about this information text at home. What was self-care about? What did you learn about? So it gives you some ideas as a parent how to help your child and a teacher guide and whatnot would help some more with that also. So I'm going back here. Remember, you can create a free account, so you don't have to use it this way. So that is a little bit about using Common Lit without even registering, without even signing in. Now I want to look at Common Lit from the student's perspective. So if you're a student and you've already signed in, or if your child has signed in, you've, you've put him or her up as a student, you will see some of the courses or a course, uh, <clears throat> I shouldn't, shouldn't say course, the stories or texts that, that you are supposed to be completing. And I, this is just a made up student. I made up an artificial student a long time ago just to test how everything worked, how to send assignments, etc. And I just sent this assignment today. Life isn't fair. Deal with it. I've used this assignment for other uh, some of my students. So I just click on that as a student. It comes up and tells me a little bit about the author. Mike Myatt is a best-selling author and columnist, commonly recognized as an authority on the subject of leadership, etc. So that gives me a little bit of insight before I even get into the story. It also gives me that same text, that same piece of information here at the top of the story. <clears throat> so in here, we, we can again change the font if you need it larger, if you're having trouble seeing it. You can make it larger or smaller if it's not fitting on your screen, I suppose. Uh, it usually comes up fine for me. Then here are the, uh, here is the text that the student would read through. I did not put the guiding questions on for this student, uh, this testing student. If they were here, you would see them come up with Q1, Q2, as you did. But what would happen is I, 
if the Q1 was here, the rest of this text would be blurred out until they answered Q1. That helps them to slow down and read correctly. Uh, there's also the help with the vocabulary, just as we saw before. And this is a fairly long text, I guess. And then there's some notes at the bottom, which can also, or there's definitions for words, but there's some extra information as well, which can be useful. A couple of pieces here, because a lot of the things that you could do without registering or signing in, you also do here, of course. But a couple of things you can do here that you could not do there, you can have it read aloud to you. So here at the top right, there's a read aloud. So click on that button. You will see little speakers beside uh, the paragraphs. If you want to start at the very beginning, start here. But if you're down partway through and you want to hear this paragraph or the rest of the story, you can click here and it will read to you. I am just going to check and make sure that I have share computer sound so you can hear. I'll just click and we'll listen for just a moment. It doesn't matter whether you are born with a silver spoon, plastic spoon, or no spoon at all. It's not the circumstances by which you come into this world, but what you make of them once you arrive that matter. One and of my clients came to this country. Read aloud at the, at the right, you would click hide read aloud and, and that would stop. So if you only wanted to hear a certain section, <clears throat> maybe there's a word uh, that you don't know how to pronounce, that would be useful. And, and the reading is fairly good from what I've heard. I don't use it a lot, but from what I've listened to, it has some intonation. It isn't a mechanical computer read. It's actually fairly well done. So that, that's very useful for some students. I don't recommend that they only listen usually. I think they should read it, but they can also listen to it. They could listen to it first and then read it or read it first and then have another listen. But hearing it or reading it more than once is always a good idea at any rate. So I think that's, that's a great option. There's translate, uh, as we mentioned before, you can translate into too many uh, different uh, languages. They also have this new uh, annotation, uh, highlighting an annotation. And you can ask your child or, or your student if you're the parent or teacher, or if you're just a student wanting to learn yourself, whether you're an adult student or a younger student, you can use the highlighter to look for certain key uh, ideas or terms. So you might see something that, uh, so let's look here. Life is full of examples of the uneducated, the mentally and physically challenged people born, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Why, why did I choose such a long one? Uh, so this is a very long sentence, but I can highlight it. I can choose a color over here. I'll just choose green. Also, if I wanted to, I could, <clears throat> scroll over again and you see the capital T. I can click on the T and I can type in, in here. Uh, I'm just going to put this is very important. Let's say uh, I would probably do something a little bit better if I were really reading this carefully and then click done. And then you have a, an annotation, a little note beside it. And this will be here for you when you come back. Also, if you're the parent or teacher, you will be able to see uh, their annotations. So if, if you, especially if you've asked them to look for certain key terms or ideas, um, you can see whether they were good at finding them or if you ask them to annotate or, or put some side notes, uh, maybe something that connects to your life and see if they're good at doing annotations, which can be helpful for studying, for remembering, for comprehension, so that is the highlighting and annotation tool. Of course, you have the questions here. It's a little different than before where you couldn't really answer them online, but here you can. You can click on the answer and then save and next, and you would keep doing this until you got to the end. I'm not sure I'm even putting the right ones. I'm going too quickly here, but I think those might be the right ones. And then at the end, this is, this is a question that was, would require a, a sentence answer or a paragraph answer you might need to type in um, longer. I'm not going to do it right now. Then you could click save and next. Then if you were really done and you're sure of your answers, you would submit your assignment or you would go back and you would try again. And then when you submit your assignment, you have to submit it again because it asks you, are you sure? And if you submit again, then it will go uh, into your account as done and also send the information to your parent or to the teacher. And so then the teacher or your 
if you're the parent, you can see the results there. Uh, my performance is here. It's, uh, the performance that's showing up here is not good because I always do this as a test and just go through quickly. A lot of things have not been graded. The sentence answers or paragraph answers have to be graded by the parent or by the teacher. Uh, so these are the results of, uh, yeah, life isn't fair, not yet graded. So we don't know what the grades are there. But you would see your, um, your results in here. So that's very useful as well. Uh, you can have favorites. I don't think there's any, I didn't put any favorites here. There's the library here. So you can go to the library as a student and read other texts. You're not stuck just with the ones that they give you. You can read some other texts here as well. There's lots of them. You can search again by grade level over here or type something into search the library, uh, sort by recently added, uh, the Lexile lowest and to highest Lexile levels. There's themes, genres, related books, all of these things. There's Animal Farm, uh, Catcher in the Rye. There's different, uh, there's the giver. I know some students have, have done a lot of work on the giver. So there's some books here um, that relate to the giver in, in some way. So, uh, and then there's my assignments. This is where we start. This is where you would pop in when you sign in as a student. It comes up automatically with my assignments. And uh, there's my accountant classes as well. And this is just uh, going to show you testing because this is just a testing. <laughs> um, student. That's not a real student. It's a made up student. So that's basically how you would use Common Lit, whether you want to register and sign in. You can use a lot of it without even doing that. Or if you are registered uh, as a student, you would log in and do lessons that were sent to you. Or you can even just read on your own and, and practice. And as um, a parent or teacher, of course, you can sign up your child or your student and you can see the assessments. I'm not going to go through the teacher piece right now because this video is primarily to just help people get started using Common Lit for reading, uh, comprehension and writing skills. I'm going to put a couple of coupons below, as I mentioned before. One is for my study skills and strategies course, become an A plus student. The other is for my Improve your reading speed and comprehension course. It's important not just to do speed reading per se, but to read with good speed and also with good retention or understanding. They go together. So I'm gonna give you two coupons below. Those courses you do primarily on your own. If you're interested in my literature writing programs or literature writing lessons, send me an email. There'll be a link below to the website. And I will send you more information because there are different options there and uh, they are, they change sometimes. So I will send that information to you if you're interested. Also check out the website and click on the free book, which will help you with uh, learning and study skills as well, or help your child. It's free. You just download it. It's easy. Um, and there's no obligation or anything else. Uh, I will put a link to Common Lit below as well so that it's easy for you to find. I think I've covered everything except the usual. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get to see other videos about learning and writing and reading and all of those fun things. Uh, click on the notification bell because I think you need to do that to get um, alerts sometimes as well. So. It is Ron Johnson from LTL Tutoring Central. I hope to see you in one of my courses or just send me a question or a comment. I forgot to mention that. You can do it below. If you're watching on YouTube, you can send me an email. Always interested to hear from uh, students, teachers. We're all students and teachers. I keep saying that over and over. We're all learners and we're all teachers at the same time. I think you should be that for your whole life. I want to wish you good learning in the next uh, week. I will see you probably before then with my, my next live stream. But uh, until then, keep learning and keep having fun. Bye-bye for now.